This is a 3 8 inch crown detail gouge for spindle work. And I want to show you how I modify it into a different grind because uh, this can be done pretty easily and quickly and I get a lot more utility out of the tool. To uh, perform this changeover, I'm just going to use a standard 1800 RPM grinder. You could use anything. Um, I happen to have the uh, Norton 3X wheels on here. This is an 80 grit. I've got a 46 on the other side. Anytime I'm going to do some grinding, I always like to make sure I've got a refreshed surface on here and it's nice and flat. So to do that, I use my true and dress before I get started. And this particular tool will enable me to actually dress that wheel very finely across its width and maintain a, a surface that's nice and smooth. And uh, by deglazing the wheel, it gets rid of the metal particles that get embedded into the aggregate. See how nicely that's coming off. I've got control of the diamond using this knob here and advance that diamond in minutely to the surface of the wheel. Go across several times and it's ready to be used. To modify the gouge, I've got to grind this heel off right here and make that a convex surface. So I'll get the grinder going again and I'm just going to support it with my left hand or whichever hand you prefer to have forward and don't rest it on the tool rest. What I want to do is rest it on my fingers here and make sure I don't engage my fingers into the wheel and then just grind that heel off. Move the tool handle a little bit further away from you and then back again. And you can see I'm starting to develop a nice convex surface back here. Just keep a fluid motion with your hands. That's why I like to support it with my hand rather than resting it on the tool rest. I feel like I get more of a flow, the movement of the tool. Getting pretty close to what I want here. I'm not going to excessively grind the tool just to get rid of these little side marks on here. Um, that'll come away eventually, but I can get a little bit closer with it. You can see how I've got a little bit more of a point on the tool now, and it's getting nicely polished up by the 80 grit wheel. By having that convex surface on there, I can just work in uh, against my wood and the edge of that hollow grind is not existent, existing anymore, and this smooth surface doesn't damage the wood. So I can reach in at very narrow locations. I also use it to scoop out the uh, concave surface for a foot on a bowl or a vessel, you know, hollow form. Um, but uh, it works very, very nicely. It's one of the two tools that I feel like I must have when I'm going to turn bowls and hollow forms. And it also works very nicely on uh, finials because you can reach in and make some very fine work in your finials, very fine detail. You can see this only took me a few minutes maybe five minutes or so and I've got a nice nice convex surface to it that's pretty smooth if perhaps you didn't get a really smooth result I think this one's pretty good that I just did on the 80 grit uh, you can try to improve that surface by going to a uh, belt sander like this uh, this is just a narrow one inch belt sander, an inexpensive one. In fact, when I turn it on, you'll find out why, why it was inexpensive. It's really noisy. But I want to show you how I would improve, um, improve that, that bevel a little bit and make it, make it smoother. Just hold the tool straight down. get above the platen. The platen's right here. If I go down here, it'll start 
kind of banging because it's got a, a, a joint in that belt. So I try to stay above it. And it just gives it more of a polished look. Here's the final result. Notice how the convex bevel is highly polished. That mostly came off the 80 grit wheel, but I touched it up a little bit with the one inch belt sander. Notice here in the flute, there's a little bit of um, bluing right here on the edge. That's not going to hurt anything since this is high speed steel. High speed steel doesn't lose its temper till about 1100 degrees Fahrenheit, which I didn't get anywhere near that. But and bluing does not indicate that you've ruined the temper of the steel in high speed steel um, like it does in carbon steel. But notice how it's nice and smooth the back is. So whenever I go in and work with that, the back against the wood, it doesn't leave any damage to the wood. I hope this was of some help to you. Thank you very much.